Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. What are we going to talk about today? New Order? Actually, New Order is the first album I ever bought and heard on my system back in the 80s. And the first song, Age of Consent, is still a favorite of mine. And just recently, just to give you some initial value here, there's an artist, N-A-K-H-A-N-E. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't even really know if it's a him or a her, but it's a great cover of that song and so check it out if you uh, like new order the other thing i was thinking of though before we get into the topic of the day is all these other youtube channels i was looking at they have these fancy openings and b-rolls and drone footage as the you know the ps audio guy and people waving and then background music to start i apologize in advance for all that this is the only angle you need to catch me i not but i do Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments if I take this drone, fly it at an angle, create a B-roll of that, and maybe some Alvin and the Chipmunks background music. What do you think about that? Anyway, let's get serious here. The meat and potatoes are what really matters in these videos, and I'm not really monetizing this anyway, so just bear with me and the low production value. But this video may actually provide as much or more value than almost any of my other ones because it arose out of something I saw recently when I visited a dealership looking at some uh, used speakers that they took in on trade, some Avalons, and then you might have seen that video that I did. Um, it should be in my video list just a week or two ago. And as soon as I listened to them, I was anxious to hear them because I had experience with them uh, many years ago, very impressed with them, and their cabinet construction is right up there with the rock ports would be a $50,000 speaker if made today. So I wanted to see um, how these older ones sound that the dealer took on trade. But as soon as I listened to them 20, 30 seconds in, you could tell they were something was wired out of phase. And it started making me remember that I've even gone to shows where things have been wired out of phase or left, right channels have been miswired because they're constantly moving gear and changing things out happens as well at dealerships too so if it happens to even the most experienced people and this owner probably never knew that the red and black were miswired we found out it was actually miswired on the back of the terminal didn't even know that he had speakers that were out of phase probably it's due to some repair job that was done so it wasn't the entire life of the speakers like that i'm sure it didn't leave the factory like that but in any case something happened and you know, if you're an audiophile, you need to be able to identify these things by your ear. But look, you know, nobody's born with these gifts of being able to do that by ear. Okay, you have to understand what out of phase is and, and whatnot and train your ears to be better. So in my previous videos, I mentioned this book here, this uh, critical listening skills. Now, this is a pain to go through and maybe I'll spend some time in the video or a separate video going through this. But I thought I would focus this video on a DVD that you can use to get your ears trained and address system issues right off the bat. And the first thing I want to do is show you, let me see, let me pause and get the little screen, the uh, DVD box. Okay, sorry. As you can tell, I spend zero time preparing for these videos, so didn't have the actual cases I wanted to show you. These are two DVDs. Um, let me explain. This is the one that first taught me almost everything I need to know about listening and setting up. It's mainly for home theaters, but let's face it, everything applicable to a home theater can apply to two channels too. And in fact, back then, 5.1 channels was all that people had, uh, maybe 5.2. So this is about 20 years old, but I still use it today. And I recommend it if you can find this one in this box, Avia um, Guide to Home Theater. Do not, I'll give you a warning, do not get the more recent one. This has very few tests on it and is not worth it. So this one over this one, but it doesn't really matter. You need to get, as I turn the camera around and show you, it's more about getting any DVD that has these tests in it that I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna focus you on the ones that you should use and it can apply whether you're home theater or not. So you'll find value here. Don't get scared off by home theater test CD. And then also I'll do a video where if you don't have a DVD or, or don't have this, we'll talk about how you can jimmy rig getting the same test, at least some of them, in Title and using Rune or Quobuzz or whatever. So 
I'll have that in a separate video. But let's turn around, let me pause it. I'm gonna show you my screen. We're gonna go through this TV and I'm gonna highlight the main test that can help you identify phase, identify channel imbalances, channel mismatches, warble tones that are much more effective in judging your bass than the normal bass tones that people do. But we'll also go through bass frequency sweeps. We'll go through pink noise, very important to um, use pink noise to identify channel imbalance, speaker balances, uh, phase. So if you don't know these things, then you want to stay tuned to the video. If you're already an expert of these things, this video is not going to help you. Sorry, just wait till next time when I show you Million Dollar System. That's coming up, coming up. Anyway, let me pause and we'll get back to the topic at hand. Okay, again, this is a very old DVD, basically 20 plus years old. So you'll see as I go to the advanced menu, graphics are not great here. Um, but again, it's about the actual calibrations, which just like audio gear nowadays, you got more in the past for less money. Same thing with these calibration uh, DVDs, the newest of via, like I was saying earlier, is kind of junk comparatively. But let's get into the, the essence. Main speaker setup, let's just go through some of these. Some of these will be basic, but it's worth going over. Channel identification, if you change out your speakers a lot, or you know, you now you could be up to 10 speakers with surround sound. You know, it's important to make sure that those are identified right. As I just mentioned, I've gone into rooms where that's been off. So most people don't have to worry about that. You can identify, especially in two channel, if uh, the left and right is off, but sometimes you can't. Like I was saying, I was just at a dealer the other day and uh, the left and right was off. So uh, just because people are frequently changing things out. Five channel speaker balance. Here's another thing that is very important, but not for the reason, not using the method that a lot of these calibration DVDs say. Let me grab my little rat shack meter if I can find it here. Okay, sorry for the camera wobble. Everybody knows these little rat shack meters. You can tell even in the shadow without any light. Okay, this is one of the tests that's made, meant to balance your channels using one of these. But I will tell you that this thing is not very accurate. Not only from a calibration aspect, you know, it's pretty good, but from the aspect of this sensor really is never, when you, people are measuring it, is never at the exact spot of where two ears on your head are. It doesn't take into account head shadow effects. And this is only down to, I think, the 1 dB. And I've been able to detect channel imbalances up to 0.5 dB. Luckily, my surround sound processor allows to the 0.5 dB. And you can kind of tell as you get experience that even 0.5 dB will throw the sound stage, not drastically, but just a little bit heavier weighted. So this is good to bench, start your benchmark of if your channels are balanced, even just left and right. But you're going to ultimately want to use your ears and this uh, and a pink noise that's supposed to be in the center will be a better test than this using a meter ultimately for that all that very fine tuning to make sure you have your channels channel balance correct and it's not always about just adding dbs on your your or balance control on your preamp um, it's not about that sometimes it's about moving your speakers forward or back just an inch or two that creates that balance that's missing because the distance from your ears is a little bit different for each speaker and that's what's creating the imbalance not the actual dbs uh coming out of the speaker so make sure you try to address any channel imbalances for any actual imbalances in your setup fix that first before you start changing uh you know any balance knobs or things on your surround sound processor okay so let me back up here go back to the tests doing each channel pretty self-explanatory Phase is where you're going to really want to understand what in phase and out of phase is. And basically, you could probably hear it on the camera phone. If not, basically, when it's in phase, the pink noise is right in the center. And when it's not, it's kind of nebulous. You don't even know where it's coming from. Kind of, you just can't locate it. 
So understanding in phase and out of phase, once you understand it, you'll never have to go back and do this test again because you'll know what that sounds like, that sound of out of phase. And that's when I was doing the Avalons, I knew it within 15 seconds. I heard that out of phase nature to the sound. And so this is one of the CDs, or if you can find a phase test on Tidal, and I'll show you that later. You can find this pretty much anywhere. You want to get your ears trained to understand this. It's even more important when you're doing a home theater because front left, front right is easy to hear phase, but sometimes when you're talking about left front, not so much center, but on the next page, there should be some with uh, surrounds, or here they are, surrounds. It's a little bit harder to tell phase. So make sure you go through phase correction and testing on all your speakers if you have a home theater. So uh, subwoofer setup, I'll probably have a separate video on subwoofer setup, but just as a high level test of things, it's important to match your subwoofer level, not just in general, but compare it to each one of your speakers like we see here. Even if you just have a right and a left, we're doing two channel and not home theater, match it because what that will uncover, let's say you've got your front channel main speakers matched, but then when you do it with the subwoofer, it's not matched with the left versus the right. Well, that tells you probably your sub is not centered in the middle um, or it's exciting something in the room to the left or the right to throw off the balance when you compare it to each speaker. And so then you'll know that it's primarily a placement issue and something in your room. You may want to put some room treatments to negate a cancellation or a mode that's causing that imbalance. So doing a subwoofer level treatment on both uh, of your channels or all of your channels, if we're talking about home theater, is important. Subwoofer phase filtered, pink noise, um, kind of valuable, not that valuable. It's you can you can read through some of the advantages to doing this, but what this will help you understand is if you've got a subwoofer and main speaker that are out of phase. So it should be a strong signal, and when sometimes you have a crossover point that is out of in your your subwoofer and your main speakers are out of phase you'll have an actual drop at the frequency that you picked as your your cutoff so this pink noise can help you find it but there are actually even better ways so that's why i wanted to just briefly mention this one as we go to the next page there's actually a better way to determine if your subwoofer and your main speakers are out of phase this warble tone is great. It's a great test. Try to find a warble tone test. The woo 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 is more, I found, helpful and more realistic toward the re regular music than the subwoofer singular tone, singular harmonic. So this it has two benefits. Number one, you can find where your phase is out of your main speakers and your subwoofer may be out of phase when all of a sudden you hear it dip or you maybe you'll hear a peak or something and you'll hear an issue that you have to address but the other thing to do which i'm not doing now is play this warble tone at a loud level such that you normally listen to and what that will do is maybe you're starting to pick it up now on the camera phone when you're playing these loud warble tones these warble tones are better at exciting things in your room that even things that just may rattle on your shelves. And this is important to find those things because it doesn't matter if the resonance or the noise is from your speakers or whatever, you don't want it. So if something's rattling on your shelves or a door is rattling and you need to put some blue tack or something to address it, this warble tone test played at a volume that you normally listen to or even higher will excite those for you and be a lot easier to help you find the offending thing on a shelf. I know it took me like an hour until I used this warble tone test. I was hearing something rattling on a piece of music and I was kept using that piece of music. It was fruitless. I came and used this. I was able to find the exact spot in the room where something was uh, on a shelf rattling and fix it. All right, so we did the warble tones. Pretty much all of that is good. Now, let's go to the next one, which is verification and evaluation. 
wide band pink. This will do different pink noise. And if you've got a home theater, this is a really good test because the pink noise will basically make a circle around your room as it transfers to each of the speakers at different degrees such that you should be able to hear that ball of sound all around. And if you lose track of it, then you know that the speakers aren't passing off to each other right and you've got your surrounds not set up correctly. You want your that ball to just hear it go all the way around. It's often difficult to hear it you know, on the very sides. That's where sometimes your speakers will lose touch with the, uh, the pink noise. Uh, so you're going to want to use this test to see if you can do that. And it took me a long time to get this fixed. But a home theater that doesn't have proper imaging is never going to be optimized. Don't spend all your money on these things if it's not optimized. All right. And then there's going to be another one for a different frequency. Um, ambient noise channel clicker. That's kind of just to see your room if you've got some echoes and stuff. Nothing really big. Here kind of piggybacks on the video I did with my center channel speaker. Just because XYZ manufacturer says this model of center channel matches your main channel speakers doesn't mean it's so. In fact, in most cases, they're lying to you. Um, and you know why you're lying and you can prove it to yourself? Take this test. Play the pink noise from the center and then play it from your left and then your right and see how much tonally it varies. Here, I'm very close. Now, it'll never be accurate, uh, exact, because the radiation from a speaker right in front of you and the distance is different than the ones on the sides uh, and the radiation there. So there will always be some tonal mismatch. But uh, these, I've got them as well matched as I guarantee any, um, quote, speaker maker says their Santa channel matches their, their floor standards, main channels. Usually they don't. They just flip, flip a speaker on the side, put the same model number on it, and it's very disappointing how far off when you do that test. So be aware of that. This is a low frequency sweep. It does the same things that the warble tone does, uh, but it actually tells you what frequencies it's playing. So you can kind of isolate and see if that dropout is right where you have the crossover point to your speakers and where your subwoofer will pick it up and... Other things it'll do, just like I said with the Warble Tone, you can play this really loud and find the things that are um, maybe excited and vibrating on your shells and creating noise. So very valuable test. It goes slow. You're going to want one that goes slow. Some of these YouTube ones go too fast for you to basically identify the frequencies or go and find the, the offending thing on the shelf. Okay. So I think that that's, let me go to the next page just to make sure. Yeah, you're going to want to do this also with all of your speakers. And like I said, when you do your surrounds, make sure I like to run them full, not to, dropping off to low frequency. You can locate frequencies if you roll off your rear channels too soon. And then you have subwoofers usually in front of your having speaker uh, sound that's locatable and then your rear is back here it's a mess don't do it just trust me on that and take a look at my video on surround speakers for more information on that okay basically low frequency pink noise somewhat valuable six channel five channel these aren't that big a deal though and you can figure it out based on all the things that we've discussed now so i just wanted to go through these different um tests and make sure you do these kind of tests. If you can't find a CD that has them, find something maybe on YouTube. And I'll go through on title where you can find a substitute to that. But that'll be a subsequent video. And I'll stop with this video now and can continue on a, a separate video for that explicit purpose. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe, sign up for notifications, and we will see you soon.